In certain problems where there's more than one thing moving, so in this case there are two runners running around, it is sometimes useful to use this idea of relative velocity. The whole idea behind relative velocity is choosing where to pin your reference train to. So for instance, here we have two runner, this guy's running a marathon, so he's probably quite tired, give him some sweat, and he's running, so speed lines. Because he started in front, let's call him front, F. And he has a certain speed, and then there's a back runner who's also very tired, and also running. So we have another velocity forward towards the finish line with that's way out here. And since they're running that way, let's call that side to be positive. So all this description is based on someone who's pretty much just relaxing out here under a little umbrella, who's not running, right? So this guy has V equals zero. And we've basically pinned a coordinate system on him with a certain direction set up so that we can tell with from his eyes how fast each of these persons are going. But in part A, they're specifically asking us the velocity of the second runner, or the back runner in our case, relative to the first. So what they're asking us to do there is instead to pin a coordinate system on him, the front runner, and see from the front runner's eyes what everything else is doing. This is actually quite simple as long as whatever we're pinning the reference frame on is not accelerating. And in this case, they are not accelerating because they tell us both runners are at constant velocity. In that sense, I can lead you through part A right now. Part A, this velocity of the back runner according to the front runner, I write like that because it's that simply as the velocity of the back runner minus the velocity of the front runner. So that way, we correct for the fact that the front runner has a certain speed, and so to translate everything into his frame, we subtract his own velocity. So in a sense, when whoever we have the reference frame on moves forward, it looks like the whole world moves backwards. And notation why I prefer this way because we have B dash F here, and here we have VB minus VF. We have 4.2 meters per second minus 3.5 meters per second, giving us 0.7 meters per second positive. Because the back runner is running faster than the front runner, back runner still looks like he's moving forward and therefore catching up. So that's a little bit about relative velocity. On to part B. They give us some additional information now. The front runner is 250 meters from the finish line, and then the back runner is 45 meters behind the front runner to begin with. So this is my t equals zero kind of picture. And the question is, who's going to win? Well, to find out who's going to win, we kind of have to go back to this guy's reference frame because these distances are given in that sense. So to find out who wins, we've got to compare how long it takes f to cover 250 meters versus the back guy to cover 295 meters because that's 250 meters plus 45 meters. It's a bit of a toss up because the front runner has less distance to cover, but he's running slower. We write the kinematics for the first front runner, so that's the front runner's position final, it's equal to the front runner's position original plus the front runner speed times t, which we'll call tf because that's how long it's going to take. And then we have a one half af t square. Uh, they did tell us that all the runners are running at constant velocity, so that actually we didn't have to write that. Solving for time. And we know it's 250 meters minus zero meters to begin with, divided by 3.50 meters per second, giving us 71.428 seconds. Then in terms of my back runner, I write everything the same, except instead of the front runner, everything refers to the back runner. 
And that's good practice because we have two different speeds here. And again, AB is equal to zero. So TB, it's similarly his final position minus his original position divided by the back runner's speed. Here, because we're doing two separate questions and we're not mixing the numbers together, we can actually be a little lazy and say, according to runner B, the back runner, his original position is zero and he has to cover 295. Or I guess you can say that he needs to go to position 250, but then he started at negative 45 and it works out to be the same thing. As long as the numbers don't mix, you can use different coordinate system as you see fit. And then divide by 2.4 meters per second, giving us barely edging out at 70.238 seconds. Since TB is less than TF, the back runner wins because he takes shorter time to get there. Going to part C now, let's see the question again because it's a long question. What distance ahead will the winner be when she crosses the finish line? So it's a completely different situation. It's a time later and we know what time it is actually. It's however long it takes for the back runner to get to the finish line because she's going to get there first. So there's the finish line. And there's who used to be the back runner moving through. And then the front runner, it's just a little behind with a certain distance in between them. Of course, we can, given both the times, we can go through the kinematics again to work out the distance that both of them run in that time and then figure out what that difference in distance is. But in this case, we can actually employ relative velocity because the answer is basically what is the position of the back runner according to the front runner at this time, right? Because if we keep on sticking the reference frame on the front runner, this is just the back runner's position. So we actually have all those information. We know that this is what we want. We know the original position of the back runner relative to the front runner, which is minus 45 meters, minus being on the other side of the finish line. And we also worked out from part A, the back runner speed relative to the front runner. And that was 0 0.7 meters per second. Since both of these guys aren't accelerating, then obviously the acceleration with one relative to the other is also zero. So this, given our choice of coordinate system and reference frame stuck on my front runner, I can do this all in one step and all the kinematics is still gonna remain consistent. As long as you're using numbers or referring to what the back runner is doing relative to the front runner. Note that in terms of how I put things down, they all have the same subscript. So they all refer to the same thing. And then for subbing in and solving, time, this was time it takes for the back runner to hit the finish line. So we worked that out from part B, keeping lots of digits plus zero. So using your calculator, you'll find that the answer is gonna be 4.17 meters, positive because the back runner is ahead of the front runner because he's the winner. So the winner, will be 4.17 meters ahead. So again, this whole thing is about when you have multiple things moving, sometimes it's more convenient and you can save some step to consider a reference frame that moves with one of the objects. Now this primarily is a 1D problem. We'll go to a 2D problem next.